Section 4 of the Indian Storybook The Indian Storybook by Richard Wilson Story 1 Rama's Quest Parts 7 and 8 Part 7 Here am I in the Isle of the Rakshasas, he said to himself. My sea passage has been a mere pleasure excursion to me. Now, how am I to discover the retreat of Sita, I wonder? Then he took his chin in his hand to think over the matter. I am very big, he said to himself, and before I can hope to win success, I must be of such proportions as will not excite attention. Thereupon he reduced himself to the size of a cat, and when night had fallen, he crawled upon the wall and looked down upon Ravana's royal city. The streets were silent, but from the gorgeous palaces came the sound of sweetest music, while the smell of delicious foods assailed his nostrils. He crept silently through the streets until he came to a palace more magnificent than the others and guarded by a number of savage Rakshasas dressed in somber garments and armed with weapons of every description. They were too large and dignified to pay any attention to the insignificant monkey and Hanuman was therefore able to slip by them unseen. He found himself in a vast and lofty corridor, and, creeping along by the wall, he reached a distant apartment, from whence came music such as sea fairies make when whispering to their pink conch shells. He put back the heavy curtains, and looking in, saw a number of beautiful maidens wrapped in deepest slumber, but Sita was not among them. He felt sure of this. Somehow he knew that if she had been present, he would have been conscious of the fact so he passed on to the door of another apartment, whence came a sound like thunder. It was the snoring of Ravana. The son of wind peeped in and saw the ten-headed Rakshasa sunk in heavy sleep. All his mouths were open, and all his noses were snoring at the same time. Hanuman looked at him for a few moments, and then swiftly made his way from the palace and into the street, where he began to reflect that after all he had failed to discover anything with regard to Sita. She may have perished miserably, he said, and if Rama learns this heavy news, he will surely die of grief, and Lakshmana too, and all the others. Sugriva, I am sure, will weep himself to death. The joys of life are over for me, and nothing remains but to become a hermit. At that moment the morning suddenly dawned, and, thinking it wise to hide himself from two observant eyes, he fled for shelter to a lovely grove of blossoming trees. The sight of such beauty cheered his heart a little, and climbing to the top of one of the trees, he scanned the pathways of the wood. Then he saw, at a little distance, a group of female Rakshasas, whose ugliness is beyond description, and, wonder of wonders, in the centre of the ring which they formed, sat Sita herself. Her long black hair streamed down to the ground, her eyes were downcast, her lips moved tremulously, her arms were stretched out, and her little hands, clenched in despair, rested upon the ground at her sides. She wore a simple tunic of a soft, bright amber colour, and, in spite of her grief and dejection, she was more beautiful than ever. Presently the sound of music and merry voices came through the wood, and a band of dancing girls appeared, who preceded Ravana himself. Sita sprang to her feet, and gave him such a look of hatred and disgust, that in spite of all his power he trembled with fear, for he was learning that love can conquer all things. Then, holding out both her arms, as though she saw Rama before her, she cried in piteous tones, My lord and my life, to thee I belong as radiance to the sun. Thou shall never see him more, said Ravana. He will come to me, she said. He will be here and that soon. The avenger of my wrongs, a lion among the sons of men, for this world belongs to heaven and justice is its law. Tremble, Ravana, for Rama is in pursuit of thee. Thou art a serpent, but he is the kingly eagle who rids the earth of vermin. I give thee one month to forget him, muttered Ravana, and if you do not, then you shall die. Thereupon he turned and left the wood as he had entered it. Part 8 Sita sank fainting upon the grass, and the Rakshasas closed around her, trying to persuade her that Rama was not worthy of her, seeing that he made no efforts to find her out, and threatening her with untold torture if she did not try to forget him. 
Do what you will with me, cried the unhappy princess, casting herself prone on the ground in her grief. Why should I care for death when Rama is no longer with me? Then a strange thing happened. Sita suddenly raised herself to a sitting posture, and, looking into the trees, began to listen earnestly. The Rakshasas hushed their cries and listened also, when they heard a voice which said, Alas, alas, for Rama, an evil demon hath stolen the treasure of his heart, and always he longs for some messenger who will bid her, wherever she is, wait in trust and hope for the gladness of reunion. Sita looked earnestly into the trees and saw a little monkey. Her face fell. It was a dream, she cried in a fresh burst of bitter grief. My senses fail me, but perhaps that's well, for if madness seizes me, I shall forget my sorrow. Then she looked up at Hanuman. Who art thou, little creature? she said. I am Hanuman, the friend of Rama, was the reply. If you be Sita, take comfort, for Rama will soon snatch you from the power of Ravana. Tell me of my lord, she said eagerly and of Lakshmana, the warrior with the laughing eyes. Then Hanuman told her the whole story, and cheered her heart with a full account of Rama's grief and constancy. Return to them, to Rama and Lakshmana, she cried. Tell them where I am, and that if they do not come within a month, I shall surely die. Nay, lady, said the little creature, leaping lightly upon the ground. Mount upon my back, and I'll take thee to Rama. Then, by his magic power, he assumed once more his own size and towered above the slender queen. Prince of monkeys, said Sita, with the deepest possible respect, I salute thee, but I prefer that Rama himself should rescue his own bride. Be it as you will, said Hanuman a little sadly. Then he took respectful farewell and prepared to depart. But his heart was so full of rage against Ravana, that he destroyed the trees of the beautiful grove, all except the ring of flowering saplings which surrounded Sita and her guardians. This behavior was not calculated to advance the cause of Sita, for Ravana at once sent out his warriors, who, after a desperate fight, made Hanuman captive and dragged him before the master. He was asked who he was and what his errand might be, and said boldly that he was the envoy of Rama, who, with the help of Sugriva's army, meant to destroy Lanka if Sita were not at once restored to him. Then Ravana was very angry and gave orders that Hanuman's tail should be set on fire. But Sita, hearing of the decision, prayed to the fire, which forthwith played around Hanuman's tail without burning it. And the son of the wind at once reduced his size to that of a grasshopper, leapt upon a palace roof and set the building on fire with the flame which was still playing round his tail. Then he climbed to the top of a high mountain and stretched out his arms towards the opposite shore, and as he sped through the air to the coast, he heard the welcoming cries of the monkey army. As soon as he had stepped down to earth, he found Rama in the leader's camp along with Sugriva and Lakshmana, and when they heard that the time for action had come, they laughed aloud in glee, so eager were they to plunge into the fray. And while they consulted as to the best means of crossing the sea, they saw sailing towards them overhead a monstrous cloud that took shape as it drew nearer and was seen as a colossal Rakshasa, the brother of Ravana, who quickly alighted and informed Rama that he had come to be his ally and guide. Sugriva suspected treachery, but the high-souled Rama accepted the newcomer as a friend, and the consultation went forward, but no course of action could be decided upon, possibly because the counsellors were too many. Then Rama took his bow and went down to the edge of the water, and there he shot an arrow into the deep heart of the ocean. And there was such a commotion and consternation among the sharks and whales and crocodiles and all the little fishes that they begged the queen of the sea to rise to the surface and find out whom she had offended. So the beautiful spirit of the sea arose and rebuked Rama for his anger and impatience. The warrior then questioned her as to the possibility of building a bridge to Lanka, but she said that this would not be permitted. But build a mole across the water, she said, and I will give your army safe passage to Ravana's realm. Then a hundred thousand monkeys leapt into the water laden with shrubs and stones, and they made a solid path to Lanka, while the queen of the sea prevented the sharks and crocodiles and other monsters from interfering with the work.